It's just an encoding library. It, uh, it doesn't do anything else, really. It's just hyper-focused. Um, it's used by Dune, Unstoppable Domains. I figured that uh, I wanted to make a general solution that's like low-level, high-performance, that uh, people can just build stuff on. Here's some just rough benchmarks from my laptop. Um, it can do like partial decoding of uh, call data for ABI, so that's like the measured in nanoseconds over there. So it works with bytes instead of strings, so it's uh, a lot faster than uh, some other tools. So yeah, just very few dependencies, supposed to be lightweight. This is just sort of uh, the general de design philosophy around it. And yeah, Java, so it uh, is compatible with Android and Kotlin, and um, it's like if you're using it on like a web server, using Decoding large amounts of data, uh, this is useful for something like that. The other type of user I have is um, like people who are trying to work with like an array of structs inside a struct and like other tools aren't working for them. So uh, like mine can decode any arbitrary um, function signature or data that matches any function signature. So here's the API for like the RLP stuff. This is different because it uses an iterator pattern and it uh, decodes on demand instead of uh, eagerly. Yeah, it, uh, all these objects just sort of point at, uh, at a byte buffer and uh, you can decode directly from the byte buffer on demand. And so it saves some time there. And then here's like the ABI stuff. So all the objects are meant to be reused many times like the function object, and they're stateless, so you can share them across threads or between code. Here's some decoding. And it also deals with JSON. So you can like parse JSON and create a function from JSON. Uh, it also does event decoding. It was added recently. Um, so just here's some details on, you know, how I got the performance benefits from, you know, using byte buffer and uh, pre-calculating things and, and holding on to them for like multiple encodings and decodings. Yeah, and there's some denial of service protection for if you're decoding like untrusted data that wants to allocate like a huge array, it'll throw an exception uh, instead of like allocating a gigabyte of uh, memory. Yeah, future work might involve um, doing like more partial decodes, like querying like nested tuples. So like going to a specific index and then if that's a tuple, go in an index and that and just pick out the thing you want to decode and just ignore everything else. Um, but it requires like jumping around uh, the index and stuff. And then, yeah, I've been talking to some people recently about a possible ABI v3 so, um, like, I wrote a command line interface that can encode arguments as RLP and uh, uses a lot less uh, bytes because you don't have an offset and all this zero padding and uh, stuff like that. So, and then you can try that out if you want. Um, headlong CLI is like the command line interface and uh, yeah, faster, simpler software Legos. I kind of just want people to, uh, you know, be able to build um, modular stuff just so that you're not, like, weighted down by all these dependencies and, like, complex frameworks where you have to read all this documentation and um, just build something to last. Mm -hmm. And then special thanks to Victor Dilipine because uh, he added some code that uh, now I can decode events with headlong, and thanks. Do you have any plans for SSZ support? Uh, not right now. I thought about maybe implementing something separate for SSZ, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to, so maybe. What are the uh, good use cases for this library? Uh, we'll do an analytics. Uh, started using it for like ingesting large amounts of data 
so they can put it into databases and like query it. So like if you have a lot of historical data lying around, you want to decode like huge amounts of it and gain insights from data and stuff. Otherwise, uh, it's just designed to work in every possible case, nested arrays, nested tuples, tuple arrays, structs and stuff. Oh, and there's no code generation, so it, it's all just very uh, traditional that way.